Let's green in the porch on my parents' new 1915 home. So I've already built all of the framing, including a craftsman inspired design that fits the style of this old home. I built and installed the screen doors as well. And now it's time to actually screen it in. But before we get to adding on all of the screen hardware, I had to first stain everything. Now you don't really need to do this if you don't mind your cedar turning gray or you just don't care, but I really wanted it to match the rest of the cedar in here. So I used the same stain combination that I used on the furniture I built in here, as well as the rest of the cedar that I added. Once everything was stained, then I got started on actually screening it in. And I am using a system that I saw another YouTuber use and I was like, hey, that looks easy. And it does give a really beautiful result, but is it easy? Debatable. So the system starts with all of these base strips that you put where the edges of your screen will be. So on all of the vertical and horizontal members where the screen will attach to. In theory, this seems like a really quick, simple process, but when you have a lot of different panels like I do at a lot of different heights, it did take quite a while. Rather than using a miter saw or anything fancy here, to get these cut to size, I would hold them up, just kind of figure out with my fingers where that cut would be, and then use some aviation snips to cut them. To get a cleaner cut, I'd actually recommend using some miter shears, which I used later in the process, but aviation snips work as well. Then the base strips have all of these little holes on them where you have to add in screws. It recommends at least one inch screws. I use one and a quarter just because that's what I already had. And I highly recommend using Torx screws because they're just easier to drive in. Once I got all the base strips attached, then it was finally time to move on to the second step, which was adding in the screen itself. So when I framed this out, I made sure that the sections, the smallest width was maximum 42 inches. And the reason for that is that the screen I bought was 48 inches wide and you need three inches of excess on each side. So just be careful of that when you're framing in your porch, make sure that everything fits with the width of the screen that you bought. So I knew that one side of each panel would just be that full 48 inch width. And then I just measured the other side using a yardstick. Then I pulled out my screen, measured how much I needed and made that cut across. Now you can use a more inexpensive screen, one that's even more see-through, but I'm using this one that is pet safe because my parents also plan to use this as a catio. And this material is really tough. So even if a cat starts to climb its way up it with its claws, it's not gonna rip, which is really nice. Once I got the pieces cut to size, then I laid them along the top strip, trying to make sure that I was getting that screen parallel so that it was not at an angle. Now the tricky part here is that you don't have four hands. So you need to keep that screen in place while you also go get your spline. So how to do that, you just take a little strip of spline, you poke it into a couple different areas to hold that screen in place while you go cut your longer piece of spline. And the spline is what slots into the base strip that holds the screen in place and makes it nice and taut and secure. It's just this kind of rubbery textured wire. I use this little spline tool to push it in to the track along those base strips. This makes it actually look a lot easier than it is. It requires a lot of pressure. It really sometimes required me putting all of my body weight against it to get that spline in, which is good because it means that's really secure and gonna create a really nice tight connection, but it wasn't so great for my forearms or my carpal tunnel because I'm a grandma and I've developed that as a result of being a DIYer. I like to start on the right side and that's because I'm right-handed because with my left hand, I could pull the screen taut as I use my right hand to drive the spline in. And that's important for these third and fourth sides. You need to be pulling the screen taut as you put the spline in. And once that's all in and nice and taut on the other side of the spline tool is a utility blade and you can use that to cut off the excess. And the nice thing about using this system is that you can place the blade in the track of the base strip and it cuts it off right at the perfect spot where your utility blade is also not going to end up jumping out and slashing through the screen that you just made nice and perfect. And that's how you end up with a nice screened panel. And each of these panels took me about 20 to 30 minutes. So this was not a quick and easy project, especially once I got high up in the air. It requires so much force to get that spline in that you need to be pulling with an equal and opposite force on your framing to make sure that you don't just push yourself off the ladder. So this ended up being a pretty intense upper body workout. Now, if you have four arms of steel, maybe this will be easier for you, but um, for me, it was not. And I consider myself pretty strong. So yeah, this uh, this project was difficult. And from everyone else that I've heard has used this system, they also say this was the trickiest part, just the amount of force it takes to drive that spline in. But otherwise, you can see that even on these really long panels, it gives a really beautiful finish without any wrinkles. And I've screened in things before using staples, and that is not the case. It looks wrinkly and loose and awful. And this system really really gives that beautiful, perfect screened in professional finish. So for me, it was worth the pain and effort. The top panels are really the trickiest because I was up on that 10 foot ladder. And again, just trying to push that spline in without falling to my death. 
thing I definitely would have changed and I recommend you not do is that if you have any tight corners like this where you can't fit your arm in easily because it requires so much force from your arm, even though I was able to put my forearm in here, I could not apply enough force to get the spline in on those edges. And I was actually so determined to do this and it still didn't work, I covered my arms completely with bruises. So if you can avoid having to work in tight corners like this, frame your porch so that you don't have to. So since I couldn't get in there with my splining tool, I decided to use a stapler instead. I did go ahead and hammer all of those staples down flush and I painted them black to match the screen so that they could be camouflaged a bit more. And because this is such a dark shady corner, no one's gonna really be able to notice. But the good news is that from inside, you cannot tell that all that that screen was stapled in. It looks perfect and, and no one needs to know. So the third and final step of this screening system is to put on this decorative cap. And this hides all of those screen edges and the screws and just makes everything look nice and seamless. Unfortunately, these caps only come in brown, gray, and white, which seems like an oversight. Screen tight, reach out to me. I do think you should offer black. So I ended up spray painting them. I used a two-in-one primer and paint flat black combo first. And then for my second coat, I used flat black enamel just for some added durability. And I needed that durability because how you fasten these on is by hammering them with a mallet. I started with all my long vertical pieces and the caps just pop right onto the base strips. No fasteners required. So I found it easiest to, again, hold it up, get a rough measurement. And this time I used miter shears and that's what I would recommend for a much cleaner cut than the aviation snips. Cut them to length, put them back up, and then just used a mallet to hammer them in all the way along the length of that base strip. And you can see how that just gives a really nice seamless look. By the end of this project, I kind of got the hang of this. So what I would recommend is you tap in the end first, then slide it flush with the adjacent strip, and then continue using your mallet to hammer it in along the rest of the length. Because as you're hitting with your mallet, you may notice that it starts to slide away from the adjacent strip and you definitely want to keep it flush. So here's where that durability comes in. You can see that the mallet left some marks on those strips and all I had to do was just take a wet cloth, wipe it down, and it got rid of all those mallet marks. The final step out here was adding all of the door hardware. And I did this over a longer period. So you'll see that there's not a screen yet in some of these clips, but I added on a spring for the screen door so that they close automatically. And then I added on these cast iron pull handles on the inside that I think look really nice with the rest of the black hardware in here. And they have a nice heft to them that just feels really substantial and fancy. And now even though I have those springs on, I do that sometimes, you know, the door just may not fully close automatically. It would be nice to have at least something out here so you can pull it closed if need be. But I didn't want to put a cabinet knob or something where the screw would be visible from the inside. So I ended up using piano knobs because they have screws attached to the knob itself and you can just drive it in without it showing up on the other side. And I did end up spray painting that knob black to match the rest. To keep the doors closed rather than having a latch where someone might accidentally get locked out, I used several magnetic latches on the inside that would keep that door nice and closed and prevent the cats from being able to open it just by sticking their paw underneath the door and pulling. The final step was adding this brush strip on the bottom of the doors just to help close up that gap a little bit more. In this extreme heat we're having too, all of the wood is swelling, including on the doors, and it was starting to rub against the concrete a bit. So for this, I just took a really rough 80 grit sandpaper, stuck it underneath the part of the door that was rubbing, and then moved the door back and forth along the sandpaper until it ground down the wood enough to where it no longer rubbed. And then the final step out here was filling this gap that was created by the changes in levels. Again, this is not a level porch whatsoever, which is why it's been such a difficult project to figure out. But this was the one big drop I was not able to fill. So I'm just filling it now with some spray foam. And the thing to note about this is that it expands quite a bit. So be prepared to have to cut off the excess. And to do that, I used a Japanese saw, which if you've never used before, it is amazing. It cuts as you move in both directions and it's really easy to use, especially if you hate normal hand saws. Later on, I'll probably paint this insulation so it blends in a bit better, but I think this looks pretty good. Here's a reminder of where we started out here and here's what it looks like now. Honestly, I think it looks so good, so sleek, so professional somehow because I really felt like I cobbled this together, but I think it turned out really well. And the thing to note is that even though it looks pretty dark and private on the outside, on the inside, it's still very bright. The view to the outside is barely obstructed at all, which is so nice. And I know a lot of people were very concerned it would be very dark and forbidding in here, especially since it's a black screen, but it is not. You can barely tell the screen is there when you're looking outside. And I think it looks so good. And more importantly, mosquitoes, they're no longer allowed in here or wasps. Uh, so it's a great time to be alive and to be in this house. Next up out here, I'm gonna add in some final decor and we're finally gonna wrap up this big back porch project. 